Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and welcome to another Content with Media podcast. This podcast is actually on site with Lynch Plant Hire near the A14, uh, where actually that business helped to deliver the most integrated project of its type at the connected worksite of the future that's since been rolled out by Highways England and mandated 3D machine control so it's used across the industry on these projects and of course on HS2, one of my favourite projects folks. And I've chosen this podcast to be the launch of my brand new series Think Tank where I'm thinking about how we can get the best value out of the tank whether that's got red diesel, white diesel, HVO or of course whether the tank is battery and electric powered or even hydrogen powered. And so what I really want to stress with this podcast is actually the sustainability of what Lynch Plant Hire is doing in this big launch. You know, what we're looking at with Think Tank is how we can get more out of our equipment and the people that operate it. So we can create a brighter future for us all, folks, uh, for the environment and for the communities that we serve and obviously look after the planet. And that's the kind of thing that Lynch are doing by launching this special machine control division. And so we want a greener, cleaner future, folks. And the construction industry has got a huge target to meet if we're going to meet net zero by 2050. So we've got to bring everybody along. We've got to make sure that we do the best we possibly can to train people right, to get the best equipment out there, to provide the best possible service and integrated construction work site of the future. And that's why I think the you know, Think Tank series is going to be such an important part of what I do in the future. Remember, the value of that drop or that kilowatt of energy is going to go up when you do things better. And you're also going to use less of it. So enough from me. Think Tank is launched now thanks to Lynch and this exclusive podcast. And it's kindly supported by Leica Geosystems. They're the 3D machine control and surveying specialist. And they can help you get a connected worksite going. So today, I'm here to talk with Paul Keenan. And he heads up the Lynch Plant Hire brand new machine control division and vision. Paul. Tell me all about it. What have you been up to? 18 months ago we came in, basically the idea was to get away from a third party supply and basically have a division that we looked after all the customers' needs ourselves. We didn't abdicate responsibility, we did good procurement and we then support fantastically well the, the projects on site. So what that really means, folks, is, is that's taking a different approach to ownership. The connected work site is all about the people working within it. So it's everything from the designers, the people that actually are developers, and all the way going through that chain means that we need to connect the work site up more efficiently. And that's all about your vision, Paul, isn't it? Yeah, when we were doing procurement, uh, we decided to have our own specification when it came to machine control. So we partnered up with uh, Leica Geosystems and, and Trimble as in site tech being the dealer for Trimble and part of that specification was every single one of our machines has got that connectivity. So from our point of view we can give first class remote support to your clients and solve almost 9 out of 10 of all support calls are solved remotely. But that also gave the, the customers the capabilities to have that connected site. Fill in the gap where Machine control was not connected, so there was a big hole in the connected site. Yeah, you're right there. We dig big holes in this industry, but we've actually actually got to doze them through and we've got to make sure we have the right level and the right grade of interactivity, haven't you? So you've chosen to work with Leica Geosystems and Trimble. We've got a Trimble system on top of us here. We've got the Leica Geosystems tablet that actually also goes into this machine. Uh, and you've set up the machines to be able to use both of those technologies, haven't you? Yes, they've done the same on the excavator and the dozer. So basically when any of our operators go through the training school, they get familiarised a whole day one-on-one training on both systems. They have to complete certain tasks before our assessors and trainers sign them off, before they're allowed to go into site. So they need to show a good competency of the core skills that machine control provides. 
And that's really important because, you know, like anything, if we've got technologies, if we've got new equipment, if we've got different OEM equipment, if we don't know how to use it properly, then fundamentally we're not getting the actual benefits of that technology on site. You know, and machine control is easy when you know how, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, but, but there's a lot of mistakes you can make. Yes, the operators, when we first started the journey, didn't really, really even know how to switch it on. So I could never be critical of the operators because they've never been shown, they've never been trained. Yeah. And part of the journey is to upskill them, not just in the, the core skills, the next step in the journey is to actually make them be able to provide the important as built information to the client. They then become an invaluable part of the project team that the machine that they're actually driving is a survey tool that can provide good accurate information rather than actually being a gut feel, they can actually make decisions on good accurate data. So that really is all about how the machine control systems work nowadays. So we've got the, the mushrooms on top, the receivers on top there, Paul. They're sending and receiving information. So downloading models, sending information back. And, and that's really important, isn't it, to, to then say, look, here's what we've dug, here's what we've dozed yeah. today. It's a 360 degree flow of information. So you initially get the design, goes from the, the office straight to the machine. Every scoop of the bucket, every push of a blade, it's creating a new as built information. So you can actually compare that to a program, and then the customer knows where he is to program. Does he need more resources? Does he need less resources? He can manage his project and understand where they actually are and understand any cost implications to the actual project. Yeah, and this is really important for project management because We've not just got a situation of using the best equipment, trying to get the best performance and efficiencies. We are on site in all weathers and all conditions, aren't we, Paul? And so, you know, it's been pouring down with rain earlier this year. So people are trying to push on hard, aren't they? So, you know, they can make those decisions, can't they? Yeah, they can. They can make really, really good decisions. They can actually move resources round about the site as well. So plant is an industry that's very, very busy just now. So you need to make your assets sweat and you need to make full use of what you've got. So what we're trying to do here is we've got a very large fleet that we're looking to enable with both brands. So we can actually respond very, very quickly to the customer's requirements. Well, let's talk about that fleet because Lynch have been investing some serious money. Every time you look on social media on the platforms where Lynch is, hey, we're getting another delivery from another manufacturer and things. Talk to me about that investment in the fleet and the level of investment in machine control. Our first purchase was April last year and now uh, to date we've got 145 systems, which is roughly split equally between the two brands. So April last year, we're now here in just about in the beginning of July. That is a phenomenal amount of kit. And, you know, to service that and to get that kit fitted onto the machines and retrofitted, you know, you've also had to make changes, haven't you, yourself? Yeah, no, we've had to integrate the machine control division into the lunch business because ultimately we're a small part of the larger lunch business. So we've had to create processes and, and, and integrate ourselves, not just in the training team that we're here today to, to, to support, the actual service side, the actual office side, with a whole host of new processes and fit into the actual wider lunch business. So that's really integration. You know, we're, we're behind us in the distance, folks, is that integrated delivery A14 project, which really did show how you can perform when you're using technology. It was delivered early, Paul. To under budget. That's never heard of in the UK, but that's what we're trying to achieve now, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, the technology provides the efficiencies, not just health and safety, but actual commercial efficiencies as well. So what we're trying to do is to make sure everybody goes home at night safe, yep. but equally as well help the projects to deliver it on time in, a, in, a, in a, obviously a commercial manner. And what's really interesting about this journey is that actually what we're looking at is the team expanding to be almost a connected asset advisory service within the business itself. And how's that happened? How much support have you had from the likes of Leica Geosystems and Trimble? Oh, yeah, no, the two of them have been, have been fantastic. They have, uh, from manufacturer's point of view, they've helped train the staff, uh, not just on the, the, the actual support side, but obviously the, oper the operator side as well. Technology evolves. We constantly need to be upskilled and be aware of all the new versions, new software and hardware that's coming to the market. 
and the training team has been through that process. We've got this other, you've got the other support team that have got in the office that can dial into these machines. But Paul, it doesn't stop there, does it? Because you know, you've got a vision. You were speaking to me earlier. I think this is really, really important. You've got a vision to professionalise the industry and to give credit where credit's due for people that are upskilling themselves. Tell me about yeah, that vision. We're, we're working currently with a few professional bodies to uh, get our support guys recognised as a professional standard. Yeah. They are a very, very important part of the survey industry and they're not really recognised as, as being a, a, an important part of the survey industry. So machine control fills in the last hole, no pun intended, of what survey can do so, as I touched on earlier on, it's very, very important that deliverables that machine control does, like the ASBOL information, that the customers have that good data. So they've got the one version of the truth yep. that they're actually working on. Yeah, and I think what's really important for me is that yeah, as we expand, as we invest in people and capabilities, what we are able to do is we're able to show the value that technology brings to the job site, but also the value that the Earthworks community and that big hole, that gap between tier one contractors, specialist contractors and earthworks contractors, how we can close that gap and be part of a whole connected work site that's data rich, that we put into and that in the future people can maintain assets and they can work on projects better because they learn from all the data and all the things that they've done right and wrong. Yeah, but what we also did, did as well, we hit our specification is all the machines are connected yeah. so, so from a support point of view our attitude is anybody can buy anything it's what makes Lynch different is how we support our, our, our products and our customers so we can actually dial in almost 90 percent of all our support calls we solve remotely so that means less downtime and the customer can carry on creating and delivering the actual project and what that is about is another favourite subject of mine, which is sustainability and carbon emissions. Yeah. Because realistically, if you've got a Lynch truck or an operator support team having to travel backwards and forwards to a site, you're burning more fuel. That machine is idle. The ADTs are idle. People are all waiting there in the queue, like yeah, this machine we have here. And if we do that, then fundamentally we're not delivering the right outcomes for the environment that we are digging and that we are making better and that we are creating into to houses, warehouses, roads, HS2, etc, isn't it, Paul? We need to protect our environment as well. From that point of view is that we need to make sure that there's less people actually on site that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. From that point of view, our connectivity and remote support that we do means that there's not anybody in the red zone. There is nobody in, in harm's way. Yeah. And more importantly as well, they're actually working in a manner that don't, don't feel fatigued. So again, thinking about who you want to bring into the industry, all of a sudden we actually open up the support role to yeah. a wider, varied potential candidates in the future. Long gone are the days where you need to work lots of hours, driving lots of miles. A lot of what we now do can be done in front of a laptop. And that front of a laptop means that we can have people that are working in, in a balanced way as well, Paul, because, you know, Lynch is not necessarily a nine to five, no. Monday to Friday business. The earthwork sector is not that, you know, so we need people that are there at the right times for different jobs. You know, rail jobs, for example, are things that we do at night time with lockdowns. We're, people are very early to start as an operator. You know, you find the operator is the first person on site, particularly if they've got all this, they can jump in the cab and get working, you know. So we need to have that flexibility, don't we? But we need to attract people that are good with technology and that are good with people and can do that. Yeah, to go in addition with the, the support function, it's not something that there's first thought of, but because we've got remote support, we're actually in the cab all the time with the operator. Right. So if the operator needs extra help, a bit more familiarisation of whatever, yep. it's a few keystrokes and we're actually physically in the cab with them. So they've got that level of comfort that if they don't know, very, very quickly that we can be there to help them and we can actually take the screen over yeah. and actually help them achieve what they need to achieve. And that's that interaction between all of the parts of the Lynch business that actually creates better outcomes for everybody that works within Lynch because you do feel, interestingly enough with that, 
I've just thought of it, Paul. You actually feel more connected with a connected worksite. You are connected to other colleagues. You're not just a lone worker, are you? Yeah, so if they're not sure of anything, they can't explain themselves better or that well, we can just very, very quickly and very efficiently look to see what the actual issue is. Well, I'm joined by Jez Bonner. Jez, you are the sort of national champion of skills, is what I've renamed you as. Thank you. Uh, and basically, that's why we're here, folks, because, Jez, this is part of a much bigger skills development, training, attracting talent into the industry piece for Lynch. We're talking about machine control here, but we're talking about a whole new way in which you are supporting the most important people in the business on site, which is the operators. Yes. Tell me about where this fits in with the overall vision of what Lynch is doing. Well, this is a fantastic thing that we've started here because as I've said many times is you can't just get in the machines anymore and turn the key. You know, technology is paramount. You know, someone said to me a couple of years ago about uh, machine control that it's a few years away. It isn't, it's now. Yeah. So we've had to kind of be proactive. So operators don't come ready-made. You know, we've got some fantastic operators. We need to make sure they're up to date with all the technology that's out there. And this is what this does because we've got some great operators of 10 to 15 years on the projects. Years ago, Dozer was GPS machine control. Yeah. But now it's coming into rollers, it's coming into excavators. Yeah. So we've had to step up to the plate, make sure these operators who are great now, but we must make them better. So we bring them into the mach machine control training center to make sure that we are bringing them up to speed of what's going on on the sites. But this is just part of what I'd call Lynch really expanding their industry partnerships across the board. So yep. it's part of what you're doing with the equipment we see from the different manufacturers. Yep. It's part of the technology from Leica Geosystems and Trimble. Yep. It's part of safety systems and it's part of all of those different components that make up Lynch as a major player, isn't it? There's more to life now than just bringing an operator, getting a ticket. It's, it's about upskilling and familiarization. Tell me about that. Familiarisation, as I always say, is just as important, if not more, than the actual training. Yep. Because they do the ticket, they do the basic training, but then they get to a site. There's so many aspects of what operations is nowadays. So we want to make sure that career and plant gets built on once they start with Lynch Plant Hire. 80% of our job in the training division is familiarisation because you could be the best operator in the world but if you've never operated that type of plant, whether it's Komatsu, Volvo, Hitachi, which we've got behind us, you know, we don't want operators to go to that on a major project and not understanding how to operate that machine. So we want to make sure all our operators, no matter what background they've got or what experience they've got, they get the familiarisation. I want them to know every single button because yeah. as my dad told me many years ago, you've got so many drivers out there be an operator, you know, operators is understanding every single part, every single piece of mechanics on that machine so you understand how it works to its best potential. And the word is operator. Now, yeah. you know, traditionally you know how to operate levers. People know now it's joystick control. Yep. But also now with machine control, we've got a scenario where in the cab there is a screen there yep. in brand new machines, some of the factory fitted, but there's a screen there of the Leica Geosystems and Trimble systems you're using at Lynch. Yep. And that has all of these other components on it, doesn't it? Yeah. So that is part of that process, getting to know how that works, isn't it? Of course it is, because as I say, when you go into an excavator or a dozer when you do your basic training, it is the basic training. Yeah. So what we've got to do is we've got to get those operators into a set venue in a fantastic venue like this and teach them what the technology is. GPS is everywhere, all over the UK now. Yeah. You know, so we need to make sure they've got that full understanding of how it works. We're very, very proud to, to get all those operators into this type of venue and spend time one-to-one -one so they walk away with a full understanding of how that piece of kit works in that machine. But it's not just about this venue though, is it, with the work you're doing? Yeah. You've changed the structure, so you've now got mobile trainers all yeah. over the UK, because that's where your kit is yeah. all over the UK. Yeah. And that's about making sure that people get that familiarisation training quickly, yeah. because you're moving from site to site. It's busy times as well, isn't it? It is busy times, but that's why we made sure, before we started this, 
we ensured we got the best of the best. We've got a project management service team who are all foremen who've done fantastic in the careers and plant. We have got, we have had all of them spend time with the Trimble and spend time with the Leica trainers. So we've been trained by the manufacturers. So we've got eight mobile trainers that go about the UK as well, because they come here, they do the one-to-one -one training, but it doesn't end there. Yep. We ensure they've got someone and we also can connect in the machine as well. But we've got all these project management service team who are around the country to make sure they're on hand if there's any guidance. You know, we can get these operators fully briefed and fully trained in the venue. We want to make sure that they've got somebody there that can be there within 20 minutes, half an hour, for anything to just progress that. Yeah. And that's really important because we know we've already got changes with Leica, with the MC1 system, yep. we've got Trimble Earthworks system there. There's always going to be iterations of these things with technology, but also your trainers are not just about the technology. This is about a whole piece where you're going into the plant, you're telling them how to use the plant. Yep. You then got other things like safety systems, which are yep. really important and technologies that you're using as well, haven't you? Definitely. You know, we've got proximity sensors around the machine. It's all about PPI, plant paper interface. And the great thing about GPS is you've got less people around the areas. But there's so much technology out there just to ensure. When I started on machines 30 years ago, Peter, there was no such thing as cameras. You know, it was all about the operator always doing their observations, you know, around, which is still paramount, of course. Yeah. But the technology now, proximity sensors, 360 cameras, you know, things like that. We need to ensure that the operators understand that. So that's what it's all about. Not just the basic machine, pulling the levers, is they've got things inside that machine. It's there to keep them safe, keep everyone around them safe, but that's paramount. Absolutely. Productivity's there, but safety's paramount. Yeah, and the other thing which I liked, I talked to you earlier, Jez, and you know, I like to talk about people, you know, and this is what this is all about, yeah. because people make this industry. What I really enjoyed was a conversation we had about five minutes ago mm -hmm. that said, this is about attitude, Peter. Definitely. You know, so you got operators that you were doing familiarization training with, new operators to yourselves, they got their tickets, but you saw something in them. Yeah. Yeah. and you've now brought them through into an accelerated program. Definitely. So tell me about that, because that's, you know, that's what we want. We want people that we can go, hey, you're good, this is great, let's get you properly into this industry. The great thing that we do at Lynch Plant Hire is we ensure anyone that wants to join the fantastic company is we get them into the depot, we get them into one of our training centres and we do assessments on them. Yep. So the two that we spoke about earlier on, fantastic uh, young operators that done varied tickets, they've done excavator, dumper, uh, roller and telehandler. Their abilities weren't quite there but their attitude, the desire just to get in there and just the things that they were saying to me that they just wanted a chance in the industry. That's what we have to do. There's a lot of people out there that have done tickets on very plant that struggle to fit into job. We cannot turn them away. We need to understand that these guys and girls need a chance, you know. So those two that come in the other day, we've got them in for advanced training tomorrow because as you say, their attitude was huge, their ability wasn't quite there, but we can work on that. You know, I mean, that's what we hold uh, very tightly at Lynch Plant Hire. It's progressing their career in plant, you know, because we've got some fantastic operators who've been in the industry for 30, 40 years. We need to fill that gap, yeah. you know, so we need to give these young operators an opportunity and we have to do that. And the other thing we all need to think about is how we attract people into the industry. So yes, we see all the kit. Yes, we see all the familiarization, but that doesn't stop there. Definitely. So Jez, it's great to hear that we're still doing the traditional spotting talent, Definitely. but then what we're doing is we're bringing that talent through Definitely. and supporting it yep. because we don't want to lose people out of this industry at the moment. And we certainly want to bring more people in. Thanks very much, Jez. Pleasure. So it was great to hear all the enthusiasm and information coming out of Jez Bonner there. And then I went on to talk to Chris Kent, and he's actually the assessor and trainer for the new division. So let's hear what he had to say. Chris, what are you doing here and uh, what are we seeing right behind us at the moment? OK, so what we're doing here is we're actually training people in the use of GPS on the machines, machine control. And we're actually getting the guys here to actually dig a real life model so that they can actually see how it works and actually learn about the system. 
So what that means, folks, is we have surveyed this area here. It's the old A14 area that's basically been put back into place after the, the structure of that infrastructure has been put in place. And we've modelled it all so we can actually create models for people to dig and work to, Chris. Absolutely. But it's not just all about digging, isn't it? This is about taking people that can operate a machine, yep. introducing them to 3D machine control on all those different elements. Explain Absolutely. to me some of the things that are typical of what you teach here. Okay, so one of the things that I first start off teaching here is I, I first of all take them through a classroom session where I'll actually teach them how the system works. I'll teach them basically how it can go wrong and what to look for in that system. We go through all of that in a two hour session. We're looking for parts of how the driver, the operator can make a mistake, how he can achieve what he needs to achieve, how he can work the system. And then we actually come out here and we actually put them on the machine. It's a live model, it's a live machine in real time in the safety of this area we're able to create the model that's programmed into the machine that is designed in this bank behind us. Now, what's really important to me, folks, is the way in which this training has been brought about. Because, Chris, you've actually had training from the Leica Geosystems yep. team and the Trimble yep. team to actually show you how the systems work. Absolutely. So that, that's been actually one-on-one -on -one training with yep. you as well. Yep. And that's the approach here with the classroom. It's that individual training, isn't it? Yep. So that enables you to do two things. One, understand the latest in machine control technology. So we have the MC1 system from Leica Geosystems. We also have the Trimble Earthworks system. And fundamentally, that allows you to show people the different ways in which those machine control items work. Yep. Lynch Plant Hire aren't a single machine control user. They've got Trimble, they've got Leica, and if their customers want it, they'll use other systems in their projects. They're absolutely, all different, absolutely. aren't they? Absolutely. They work differently, they've got different menus. Trimble works slightly different. You've got to have an understanding of the menus. Leica, again, it works differently. They've got different components, generally do the same thing, but they work differently and, and it's important that our operators are able to use both systems and actually know their way around these menus and that's why we do a one-on-one -on -one course down here. It's one person per course. And so what really interests me is what are those things, Chris? What are the secret things that go wrong that people don't want to talk about that are all important? Give me some examples. Okay, Chris. so one of the first things is GPS uses satellites. Right, up in the air. Absolutely, beaming they're beaming yeah. the signal down. We use it in our everyday stuff, our mobile phones, tablets. It's a one-way signal. We don't talk to satellites. We're getting a signal sent down to us. But due to the way the atmosphere works, we need a correction source because the signal's not absolutely perfect. It's only good to about 15 metres. So we have to use what we call a base station or a SIM card to get a correction source so that we can actually pinpoint it to about 30 millimetre. That's the things that we teach the guys is what can go wrong in that system, that whole breakdown of the satellite sending the signal down to a base station where it gets corrected and then sent off to the machine. So the drivers will know if there's an issue in that. They'll be able to see it from what we teach them. What's interesting about that, folks, is people are obviously using uh, a lot more of the SIM cards, which we're getting all the models put over the air. But there are places in the country, and we're in construction, Chris, so generally ground and where you're digging and what you're putting into place has not necessarily got that connectivity yep. that you need to get that millimetre accuracy. Mm. Just over there, folks, is the A14, a huge collaborative project that Lynch was involved yep. in, and they needed ultimate accuracy. Absolutely. That was a full machine control project. So those elements are really important. So one of the things we can do with our Leica system is we can go through Connex and we can actually phone up an engineer. They'll take over the system remotely. If there's any issues, they'll go through the whole system, we can work it out, what's the problem is, and nine times out of 10, we can get it corrected just literally by making that phone call and the engineer taking over the system. And that's really important because, you know, the operators need to know these sort of things as well, don't they? And look, the way the system works as well is obviously we're trying to get down to fine levels. Yep. Whether that's a dozer, and they've got dozers here as well as the excavator we see behind me. We're trying to get it to a fine level and there's, there's things you need to do with the buckets and there's things yep. you need to do as we call 
operators and machine control on site, the surveyors on site of the future because they can take yeah. uh, all of the different readings of jobs that they've done as well. Tell me a little bit about those sort of things. Okay, so one of the really important key factors is obviously we can change a bucket on a machine. We can have a large, what we call a ditching bucket for doing grading work. We can have a digging bucket. We can have a bulking bucket, all different size buckets. The whole point of the GPS is that it is measured to the tip end of the bucket. The very tip of the bucket is where the point is measured from. So you need to make sure that you calibrate the bucket, i.e. measure it to the system and let the system know the sizes of the bucket and the angles of it. So we actually teach our operators to be able to actually calibrate a bucket on each machine so that they can turn up to work. If a new bucket turns up, for example, they're able to measure the bucket, set it up into the machine so they get the right tolerance when they're putting the bucket in the ground. And of course, Lynch Plant Hire is one of those big players in the market, Chris, that doesn't just work with one brand no. of machine, no. let alone one brand of machine control. So again, part and parcel of this training here is to actually get people to understand how to set up a system and how to use the nuances of the other machines you've yep. got in your fleet, isn't it? Absolutely. So everyone is familiarised with all the machines that we put them on. They all learn how to use that system, that machine, so there's no one out there that is a stranger to that system. Yeah, and the other thing about machine control is it's an enabler, isn't it, for more people to come into the industry and be safer on site, yes. so there's less people plant interface. So that's really important for operators to get used to as yeah. well, isn't it? Absolutely, so one of the things that um, we've found is that you can, first of all, the driver can turn up in the morning, doesn't have to wait for an engineer to come out, got all the information, so it's all there. But one of the, the, the other great things is we can reduce the amount of people around the machine. So we haven't got a banksman at the, end, at the front end of the machine with a staff taking depths. The machine doesn't need that. It knows how deep it is, it knows where it's digging, it knows the plan because it's in the cab, this information is there. It takes away that factor of a human being at the front end of the machine, dipping. Yep. So, you know, you've got that safety factor that you haven't actually got someone there, which offsets cost as well. And I mean, you know, you've just mentioned cost there. This is a big investment in training, isn't yep. it? This is a big investment in taking people off the job yep. into this environment to give them the skills and the skill sets. You've only been uh, starting on this for a few months or so now. You, you've had, what, 60, 70 people come through yeah, already? we're getting up to that sort of number. We've, we've got them through to going out to site and we're not failing. They're, they're going out to site and they know what they're doing. You know, we do a feedback form with them on every single guy will fill a feedback form in. They've all agreed that it's been a great bit of training and they valued it. It's time well spent. And this is a time that we're spending on getting better productivity, better efficiencies, uh, more confident operators on site so that actually we move earth once and we move it well and fundamentally what that means for me and why I'm down here Chris and we talked about this before is reducing carbon emissions, yep. reducing the carbon impact of the industry using technology but making sure we focus on the people that are actually like I said before the brains behind the machine and that technology. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't switch it on, if you don't know how to use it, if you sit there idling, then we're all losing, aren't we, Chris? Absolutely. We have had to invest into our operators. They are the most important key factor that we've got. That is one element of what we do that is so important. And these operators are going away from here. And like you said, right first time. That's what it's all about. Producing a quality product, and they're able to do that once they've learned how to use this system, they're able to achieve what the construction sites are asking of them. And Chris, if you notice, he's got his integrated delivery hat on today. This is what customers are wanting as well. That integrated delivery, the A14 that's just over there, was based around people putting money into training, into equipment and into development. And guess what, Chris? You're never going to be out of a job yourself because all these systems change and you keep having to bring them back, don't you? Absolutely. We're just moving forward with the new technologies. Thanks ever so much, Chris. You're Great welcome. to see you. Great to see investment in people in the industry as well at this important time as we are busier. It's boom time. Like the motorway era, we're really having to do a lot on site. And of course, machine control and technology allows us to do that. 
See you later, Chris. See you later. So it was brilliant to talk to someone like Chris Kent and how he's bringing people through that machine control division. But what I wanted to understand was how Lynch are investing and what they're looking to for the future. They've already invested a huge amount of money, time and resources into this new approach. So I talked again to Paul Keenan. HS2, Highways England, various other major infrastructure projects going to start over the next year or so. It could easily be double that. I know the equipment that we are currently buying for next year is well in excess of £100 million. Wow. So we, we as a business will be growing dramatically and machine control and technology will be a part of that. That's just the equipment, folks. £100 million to support operators and to support customers and to support the connected worksite journey. Then there's all of the training, then there's all of the people, then there's all of the support, then there's the new operators you need and all of the skill centre training like where we are today, Paul. But then Paul and his team, like we said, uh, we're talking earlier, Paul and his team have got this vision of how to then deliver out the connected work site, use other technologies and other things in the future and so that can actually form through the great integration that's been done today over the last 18 months and make everything more efficient. Yeah, yeah the assister operator as well, the, the QR codes that you see on the side of the excavator here, there's actually a machine control tab on it and there's two dozen how-to videos. So if the driver is not sure about how to do something, quick scan, look at his phone, and there's a short 90 second video on how to do a particular task. So we're here to try and not just upskill the operator, but actually make his job that little bit easier. If he feels more confident, he'll be better, safer, and ultimately the project will get a very, very good all-rounded operator. Well, I'm going to end it now, folks. Paul, what a fantastic journey this has been for Lynch. And how we are going to see this machine control division grow is super exciting for everyone. Thanks very much for spending Thank time you. with me Thank today. You. Of course, this podcast was recorded on site, but on site is not just where the Lynch team are. So actually, I've come back to the studio so that I can talk to James King, who is the machine control support engineer. And he's in the middle of all of this fantastic new setup for Lynch, because James is the person that comes into the cab and helps all of the operators and also helps coordinate a lot of the behind the scenes work that goes on with the installers and things like that. Now, what's interesting about you, James, is uh, you've done a bit of installing yourself and now you've worked yourself up to this uh, position here at Lynch as the machine control support engineer and sort of linchpin uh, I love how I did that. I bet you didn't. Nick. And uh, of the of the machine control division, James, tell me a little bit about yourself, please. Uh, yeah, Peter, I started with installing around five years ago uh, with like a Geo Systems. Started actually from scratch, putting um, components on machines, calibrating, and then yeah, worked my way up. So now I'm working with the likes of Paul Keenan as tech support um, engineer for Lynch Machine Control. And so that's really important because there's two elements to this support, isn't it? There's, there's the fundamentals of getting the models into the machines, of supporting operators inside the cab, but there are also the fundamentals of understanding what could maybe be happening on site. Like maybe we've got a, a coily cable that's come loose or things like that, because you understand that installation element of the machine control. Uh, so yeah. tell me what typically now happens, James, in uh, the, the Lynch setup and, and what you're doing now and how that all coordinates to support the customer. So typically now, I guess you'd say I'm the piece in the middle uh, between the operators and the engineers uh, and the machine as well. So I'll offer um, sort of data prep support with our customers. If they're struggling with file formats, things like that, we can prepare data for them, upload it remotely for them. And we're also that first line support as well for our, our operators. So if you've got um, operators that just need refreshing um, on what to do, even if they have spent time with Chris Kent, we all forget things. So I'm literally just on the phone to them. Yeah, they call me up. I can jump and dial onto their machine remotely. And usually nine times out of 10, our service calls are, are, are resolved uh, either on Connex or Works Manager. 
So the, the thing about it is, let's just step back a minute there. The data is really important, James. And, you know, and I love a bit of data, you know. So, and we're talking big data at the moment because the projects that were on machine control with Lynch are, are not just the small ones. They're the big ones as well, aren't they? So yeah. when you say the simplistic, and I love how you just get, well, I sort out the data, I sort out this, that, and that. It's not that simplistic, folks. Um, James is actually dealing with the critical elements of the files that go into the machine control system. Now, there's certain elements and certain things you need to look out for there, James. So you, you might get a, a 3D sort of whole site project a file from a client, but that might not be in the right format. Explain uh, what happens then. I'd say I might have given it to you from a completely different thing like AutoCAD, for example. No, exactly. So a lot of the time, they'll just have a model sent over, so either DXF or Land XML. But some manufacturers, some brands, they need their own formats to upload into the panels. So we can provide that service. We can prepare the data. We can convert it for them. Um, and we can also check as well that the data is actually suitable for machine control as well. Things like uh, helplines are in there, boundaries, things like that. It just makes it a lot easier for the customer then. So if we're here and on hand to, to help with that data, uh, it makes it a lot easier for them to read it. It makes it a lot easier for the operators to read it as well. And it just makes it a lot more accurate when it comes to capturing as built data from it as well. And I think with that, you know, what we're talking about here, folks, is the Earthworks model. You know, so there, therefore you're creating the Earthworks model. And what we're talking about with the as-built is as the machines go through that project, they're sending data back to you as well. And I know from there talking to the training team that they're actually getting people, uh, your operators in particular, to use the machines as surveying tools that are marking different points when they've completed things like trenches, for example. So that as-built uh, model is is really important, isn't it? I guess you're you're working again with with other engineers and other customer elements to show them how to, to use and interrogate that as-built model as well, aren't you? Definitely. So we've got a number of sites that's using the as-built capturing uh, side of uh, things right now. So obviously we've got Chris Kent as well, which is doing a fantastic job of, of training our operators on not only using machine control, but now I think also capturing as-built data, which I find a lot of the operators have never done before. So having Chris Kent been able to provide that training on how to do that and how to do that efficiently and accurately as well is really a key part of, of making sure that the data at the end is accurate as well. But then I will go in, I will um, support the engineering team then with the customers. I'll show them how to obtain that data as well from start to finish. As long as we can start accurately, we can end with an accurate data coming out of the product. And I think it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what it's all about, folks. You've got machine control. Fine. That's on a machine. You've got the machine itself. Great. It's, you know, all the new fleet that Lynch has been investing in, the millions of pounds I'm seeing every week that there's another delivery. But it's no good unless you get it right at the first point there, James. Yeah. To come in has to be right. Otherwise, what happens, folks, is that you find that you've got all the surveyors go down, they're checking everything, and you've been using uh, the model version 1.0 when actually they've on model version 3.0. And so yeah. if you've got the wrong model in the first place, folks, it's always going to cause problems. That means we're going to use more fuel. That means we're going to do more corrections. And that's basically what ruins the whole benefit of machine control. And that's a fundamental point, isn't it, James, to interrogate these drawings to make sure that they're right and also when new versions do come in to get them into the machines how do you do that so we get it quite often what i'll do when we've got a new customer i'll spend a good amount of time with their engineering team usually multiple times as well um, and i'll show them how to access the machines remotely and how to be independent in managing the machines but if there is revisions of models and things like that our more established customers uh, are able to upload it themselves new additional models and manage the data but i can still support customers completely as well our end for the our newer customers they can send me models directly i can upload the models for them i can check it out for them and make sure everything's all all good to go uh, before uploading it to the machine so that's really you know solving the problem that i think is in the industry at the moment as we mature in the machine control division of all of the earthworks plc i call it because you know it's it's spotting those things that are slightly wrong the the bun is wrong or you know you can see that some of the things haven't translated from this AutoCAD to the 
the Earthworks model that you need. And so that's really important. And I think, you know, when we get revisions and things, it's important to get those things out as fast as possible. And now you guys can do it over the air using the GPS network that you use for mobile phones. So that's great. So James, it's a busy, busy time for you. I know James has had to actually put his other team members on his job because uh, we're recording this in the morning, folks. And of course, you turn everything on in the morning, James, and no matter how good the equipment is, no matter how brilliant the model is and everything like that, there's always something that can uh, go slightly awry with technology that always needs the turn off and turn on again. But it's it's not that straightforward, is it, James? And that's why dialing in, talking people through it, and also taking control is so important. And that allows you to really be the help inside the cab, doesn't it, James? It makes it a lot, lot easier. I can literally take control of the panels inside the cab. So you can hear the operators when they're on the phone to their mind blown. All of a sudden, someone's jumped on their machine. And they're taking control of it. But it does. It makes it a lot, lot easier. Obviously, people forget things. So when we got operators that just need refreshing, I can jump in. I'm literally sat in the cab with them effectively. And it goes whilst I'm on, on the road as well. So I've got access to all machines on my mobile phone. Even if I'm busy and doing other service calls, installing, sporting, I'm still right there with them on my mobile phone. And I can, I can take control uh, and jump in. Yeah, and absolutely. I was talking to the team earlier and, you know, they, they said, well, James often will pull over into the services, grab a coffee and, yeah. uh, you know, and talk to the operators. And, you know, that's the, that's the thing. You can do that safely now when you're on the road, obviously when you're not driving. But, you know, that's the, the critical element about the connected work site. And James, you are the middle of the connection. Uh, the linchpin, I've called him, folks. And that is James. Thank you very much, uh, machine control support engineer. He does a lot more than that, folks. Um, but the great thing about James is he's installed He's used the system and now he's helping others to deliver that, not just the Lynch team, but the customers themselves. Thanks to, for talking to me, James. Back to the phones for you. Cheers, Peter. Thank you. So there we are, folks. This has been a major announcement, exclusive announcement from me, Peter Haddock, the technology that I love, the machine control world, taking us to another level uh, with Paul from Lynch Plant Hire with Jez from Lynch Plant Hire, with Chris from Lynch Plant Hire, and with James, the linchpin himself of Lynch Plant Hire. Uh, that is over to you, the listeners, to really think about what we've said here today, because this is all about how we do the connected worksite and how Lynch has developed a whole system with a whole team that can support that, all their customers, no matter how large or small, to get more productivity, to get more efficiency, to reduce carbon emissions, and fundamentally to take us into the, the new era of plant technology and driven by people. Uh, so what a fantastic opportunity it's been for me to take this podcast on the road, on site, and also to talk to James in the studio. So it's enough from me, folks. Thanks very much for listening. And also a huge thank you to Leica Geosystems, the 3D machine control and surveying specialist who can help you get your connected site on site. And you can find out more about how they do that with their equipment at leica-geosystems.co.uk. And until the next time, folks, goodbye. <laughs>